What's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about uh, the bare minimum tool list that you need to break up as a rig water. I'm going to tell you the prices, uh, what to buy, how many to buy, and what's the best way in buying it. Uh, whenever I broke out as a rig water, I didn't want to spend too much money. So I'm going to show you the techniques that I did and what did I have to buy. Uh, before we get into it, you have to uh, ask yourself what type of rig water you will be. Now, if you're a chemical plant rig water, kind of like I do, I'm going to tell you now, the only thing you need is a welding machine. They actually got guys who show up with just their truck, leads, welding machines, and basic uh, tool list. Now, if you want to be a rig welder, like a pipeliner, like, you know, most of the guys who work in West Texas, then you will need way more tools. Uh, me personally, even though I work for the chemical plants, I still have extra tools and stuff that I need because I do take on side jobs. And uh, the tools that I'll tell you is stuff that will benefit you. And uh, you can use them for, like I said, uh, side jobs. And uh, I'll tell you what you need if you want to be like a pipeliner. Okay, first things first, if you haven't got your vehicle yet, you might want to consider getting you a diesel truck. I would not go with uh, gas. And the re one of the reasons is because I just filled my diesel truck up and it is almost $70. And driving to work, driving to work in about a week, I'm spending about $100 in diesel. And if you get a gas, you're going to probably double that up. And that's a lot of money in the long run. Now, I know people who use the gas when they first broke out. And that, if that's what you have, it's okay. Then, But as soon as you get some money, man, get you a diesel. You know, it costs you less in the long run too, man. Another thing that I might want to consider doing is getting you a uh, dually. I know some people, you know, you can still get the uh, 250s and stuff like that. It's always better to get a dually simply because you're carrying a lot of weight back there the 250s can't handle the weight but you got that extra uh spare tire just in case if you was to catch a blowout you know it's which is way way safer on the road and you'll you know if you if you're gonna become a rig water most of the time you will travel a lot and you want to be safe on that road you don't want to flip or any of that case you know you have a lot of weight back there another thing is to consider is to get you a a, a four-wheel drive now once again, I've seen people in the field with a uh, two-wheel drive, and I've seen them get stuck. i actually seen that happen a lot. Now, if you already have a truck and it's a two-wheel drive, don't sweat it. You'll be fine. Uh, the tip that I suggest for you to do is get you a uh, some good mud tires. Get you some good mud tires. This, this happened to me. I was working uh, at a job site, and at the time, I didn't have mud tires. I just had uh, my regular tires on there, and it was really, really muddy that day, and we had to go all the way to the back of the plant to weld, man, and I got stuck. I got stuck, and then they had to get that uh, forklift to pull me out. I mean, the, bull, the bulldozer to pull me out, and I had one of my boys. He had a uh, two-wheel driving, but he had mud tires on his, and he just went straight through it. If you have a regular two-wheel drive, don't swear to just do what you can do and get you some good mud tires back there so uh let's just say you haven't bought your truck yet me personally i didn't want to spend a lot of money even though at first i was thinking about getting me a uh a ford 350 kim ranch sunroof loaded out decked out but i didn't i decided to go cheaper i'm glad i decided to go that well my wife convinced me to go cheaper and she was actually uh uh smarter about that with me because you know me I, i'll spend that money but she was like hey don't 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 go that route but anyway uh i paid 30k for my truck i originally didn't like the truck i'm not gonna lie to you i really didn't like the color i got the truck because it was 30k it only had 70,000 uh, miles on here and i still had warranty to uh, 100,000 miles so that's one thing that i really liked about my truck is that i was able to get warranty now you can still go a cheaper route which would get a, a older vehicle with more miles but one thing you might want to consider when these diesel trucks break man there's a lot of money to fix them and i didn't want to deal with any of that plus another thing you might want to think about get you an older truck most of these rig jobs like i said is going to be out of town you're going to be traveling and some of these jobs are in the middle of nowhere last thing you want to do is be broken down in the middle of nowhere and you know sasquatch might come kill you or something you don't want any of those bad things to happen or a grizzly bear might come find you and when i buy my truck i really like that warranty if anything ever happened to it the warranty will cover it and i actually did have something happen to my truck uh i forgot what part broke or something i took it to the I, mean, I took it to the dealership and there was like a five thousand dollar uh repair note and my warranty covered all that so that's something you might want to consider get you a nice truck with warranty 
you know uh it don't have to have that many miles but at the same time man that warranty will help you out a lot you want a peace of mind when you when you uh making such an investment you want to guarantee your investment you want to make sure that you know you get the most out of your money and you want to know that you are covered as i know i have a sa 200 a blackface if you're breaking out this is the best affordable machine that you can get and they're okay you know what i'm saying uh one thing about these machines i will have to say is that since they're older machines there's times where it's, there's times where things mess up on them i've been fortunate enough that this machine hasn't let me down yet it only messed up one time and it was just like a little small repair that i had to do on it but other than that it's been been a great machine to me if you don't know anything about machines and you don't have nobody to help you just go with an sa200 and the reason i say is because they're easy to work on a lot of people could work on them other than diesel machines a quick story of what happened to me when i first broke out i had a lincoln classic 3. i bought the machine i spent a total of about seven grand and that machine went to shit. it, it broke on me uh, i'm gonna make the story as short as possible i bought the machine i used it for like two weeks i was welding nothing but schedule 10 on it everything was welding perfectly fine when i got to like heavy pipe and you know i had to really dig in that 316 rod man then the machine overheated so the machine overheated i, I called my mechanic up he said he couldn't see me so i had to uh, take it to another mechanic I never went to so I went to the new mechanic up in North Houston as soon as I got there He was like hey man, I seen that machine already I had already told the guy the machine wasn't no more good the motor the motor was about to go out in, in a matter of time and that's why he sold you that uh, welding machine so I took a, a loss on that I lost like seven grand fortunately I lost all that money but uh, if you're in a situation where you can't afford a machine you got your truck uh, you could do the route that I did which I went to uh, Red Ark. I rented one uh, it's cheaper I'm not gonna say it's cheaper but you'll pay about the same price if you rent the machine for two weeks or a month it's almost about it's only like a few dollars off so I was paying roughly about eight to nine hundred a month for the Red Ark rental uh you you could check them out and see what you know if that you're in that position where you don't have a welding machine so i took that route i rented the machine for a few uh i think two months until i had enough money to uh buy my own uh welding machine when you buy these type of machines you're roughly gonna pay between three to about fifty five hundred for them i wouldn't pay no more than that honestly now of course you'll need some leads uh, i'm sorry for the guy who asked me what kind of leads i had i think he asked me if i had the one point or the two point these are actually one I told him to my bad bro. I don't know why I told you those two, but uh, you, I got a hundred foot. Uh, I recommend you get 125 on each one for the ground and the, uh, for the positive and negative. And that's because sometimes I was two shorts. So 125 feet should do it. And of course your extension cord for your for your uh, remote. So that's another thing that you will need is a remote for if you do get an SA200. They go anywhere from depending on what brand you get. I think both brands are good because I actually had both of them. By the way, I'm gonna have all the tools that I list on the description box below. Everything I will link everything to my Amazon so you can just click on it and order it if you're not sure if I'm on the what's the right tools. But uh, I bought the leads for about 150 each on our uh, offer up. I wouldn't you don't need any brand new leads. You can actually uh, if you tie it on money, you can do what I did and just buy them from uh, offer up. Yeah, don't forget, uh, I got this little step too. Don't forget to use the code, the well lab to get, uh, I think 10% or 15% off, I, I forgot, but it's called Rhino Storm Step. But another thing that you will need is some uh, jack stands. Uh, I recommend you get at least four. I think they go about $100 each. Uh, I have five, I have the other one somewhere around here. I think it's under there, but uh, yeah, man, uh, four jack stands should do it. The way I did it was I just have a flat bar right there bolt it down to my bed and I have some round bar coming up and I just sit them on there and they're pretty sturdy they really don't shake uh, another thing that uh, you will need that I don't have right now is the oxygen and gas uh, tanks when you work for chemical plants you really don't need them uh, I had one job that did require them and I uh, didn't have them and if you was in a situation like I was and you don't have them you can also rent them I think it's like 50 bucks to get them and it's like 50 cents a day or something like that it's not it's not that much money but you will need the tanks if you plan on going to like a pipeline like i said compressor station all that good stuff with taxes and all that you'll definitely uh need that now for tools you might want to get you a toolbox i think this was the one of the cheapest toolbox that i have which is a husky i 
will probably upgrade to like a way better one because this one is pretty cheap you know i, I mean it, it gets it gets the job done but uh you might want to get you a better one in the long run and i will get me like a, a weather uh, guard one but onto the tools you will need you some grinders now if you have the money get you two of these because you it'll save you time on the field production wise because you need one for your wire wheel and want to grind these go for about 80, 85 bucks now another thing you might want to need is a pencil grinder this will help you out a lot too you will need this definitely to clean the inside of the pipe this is 150 dollars for these i would not buy these used simply because you don't want to buy something that's going to mess up on you just go ahead and buy those new another thing that i have is my pipe clamp right here you definitely going to need you a good uh pipe clamp uh this one goes for about 175 bucks if you can find it used go ahead and buy it used make sure everything works right of course this how much i pay for mines you definitely gonna need one this goes from two uh to six inch and uh i do have another one which goes to i think six to 12. i recommend for you to get that because you will need that those go about those go for about 220 i believe another thing that you might need is some two hole pins you definitely gonna have to get you some two hole pins those two hole pins i believe i paid 50 bucks and you'll need the small ones you'll also need some smaller ones i think this is for the 516 holes the small ones go for about 30. of course you'll need also need your regular levels and stuff you'll need some good squares your typical fitting tool oh yeah but i forget if you do get the uh oxygen and gas tanks don't forget your damn holes. Definitely gonna need a hundred foot of holes with your torch. Oh yeah, another thing you might want to get you is the big grinders. This will, you will need this whenever you weld a big bore pipe. You don't want to use the little small ones because it will burn out. You will have to replace it. Man, I had to get back into the truck, man. It is freezing out here. But tool wise, to get started, that's basically uh, everything that you're gonna need. So roughly, if I, if I did forget anything, I will have it in the description box below. Oh yeah, before I forget, make sure you get you a a blue book. You definitely gonna need this. Now, I'm not sure if y'all know, cause I'll be seeing your comments and I feel like they have a lot of guys who want to become rig welders and they don't even know much about it. If you want to become a rig welder, you have to learn how to fit. You have to know the basics of reading ISOs, how to cut pipe takeoffs. If you don't know, you can still finesse it. You know, you can still make it work, but you're definitely going to need you a blue book. I have a blue book and I also have this one right here. It's a, a cheater's card. I'm, I'm having it in the description below too. This one is my favorite simply because it's way, way more easier. You have all your takeoffs. You have all the info you need. This is my favorite one. The blue book, I just use it for other things. I'm, I'm, I find myself using that one way more often. So we'll get that one. And uh, like I said, uh, if I did forget anything, I'm going to have it in the description uh, box below. It's pretty much all you need to break out. Oh, yeah. I just remembered. Now, if you plan on going, like I said, if you plan on being a pipeliner, you definitely need to get you some uh, Beverly machines. This is probably one of the most expensive things that you will have to buy, dude, because these bevel machines range on from like, if I'm not mistaken, like two to three thousand dollars. And they cost a lot of money And the torch is like eight hundred. It's a lot of money, guys. Uh, I personally don't need that simply because of the type of industry that I'm in. But, you know, when you work for chemical plants, you can't use any of that. I think it's a safety hazard because you're dealing with chemicals and they want to avoid as many sparks as possible. That's why everything gets ticked. You know, whenever you do tick, you really don't have many sparks compared to whenever you do stick. You got sparks just going everywhere, especially if you're doing uh, 80 10. <laughs> if I did forget something, most, more, most likely I probably did. Drop it down in the comments below. Let the rest of the guys uh, know what I missed out. Or what was i missing but make sure you include the price so they know about roughly about how much money they will spend roughly you know like i said 30k for the truck uh 45 for my machine and uh about i'm gonna say roughly about three to four thousand in tools i didn't include all my tools uh, i just wanted to give y'all the basics I actually, I actually have way more tools back at the job site that i just leave there but uh uh don't forget the remote 
Don't forget your water remote. You're definitely going to need that, guys. But, yeah, man, I hope I was able to help you out. If you have any more questions, I'll try to get back at you. I, I usually respond to everybody in the comments. Sometimes it does take me a little while to get back at y'all because, you know, I'm, I'm working and stuff like that. But uh, is there any other videos that y'all want to see, let me know. I'm going to try to get to that. I have tons of video collabs coming up, too, for y'all guys whenever I get uh, back to Houston. But, man, I appreciate y'all watching my channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.